Hey, what is going on, my fellow lead coders? It is Sunday, May 29th, 2022, 11.02 a.m. my time. Uh, yeah, and uh, May is winding down. What a crazy May, wasn't it? Um, and it was crazy for a lot of reasons, including a lot of lead code for me and uh, getting into the stride of recording an algo video a day. It's my favorite thing to do, kind of. <laughs> well, and yeah, so welcome to Shaft the Algo Guide. Uh, I have another problem for you today, and uh, before we continue, um, please like, subscribe, and comment in the link below, in the section below, because it helps the algorithm and helps me uh, promote these videos and improve upon what I'm doing. All right, so today we have a classic leap code problem called number of islands it's 200 so it's a very early leap code problem with a huge number of likes to dislikes okay 13,000 and uh, yeah this is um, a fundamental problem and I'll go into the reason why it's one of the blind 75 uh, and let's get to it okay so given an m by n 2d binary grid grid which represents a map of ones and zeros uh, land and water respectively return the number of islands an island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically you may assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water okay so your input is you have this grid it's a matrix right with ca these characters strings uh, of ones and zeros and uh, you're supposed to return the number of islands so basically the number of uh, sections of ones that have been connected okay so in this case you have this one connected section of ones and when they mean connected they mean that connected not diagonally only vertically and horizontally so we're, this is important we're not looking at the eight connected uh, uh, graph we're looking at the four connected graph okay and the hint is that this is a graph problem right probably makes sense okay so in this case uh, example two we have a uh, section of ones here, we have a one here, and we have a two ones here. So this section of ones is one island, this section, this one is one island, and this, these two ones next to each other is one island, so the output is three. So how the heck do I go about and solve this? Well, what we can do is, if you remember, uh, or if you're familiar with flood filling, right, uh, flood filling is the idea of taking a point right and replacing everything around it with something else so if we take this let's say one one zero zero I'm just gonna copy this zero zero if I touch if I visit this guy and then if I decide to replace everything around it with zero right then I will have filled I will have filled this guy up and how do I do that I basically I, I'll, I basically make sure that when I'm doing whatever process of re repeated filling that I'm doing for each cell I do it so that I only execute that process if I don't have a zero right I'm only executing it if I had a one right so basically uh, I'm clearing out anything that has a 1 and stopping when I have a 0. That's how I know, because if I didn't check whether I had a 0, right, then I would go backwards, I would clear, I'd do extra work to clear these guys, and then I would run into an infinite loop, because if I'm checking everything around me, this 1 that has been converted to a 0 is now a 0, and since I'm not caring about 0, I'm going to go back to this guy, and then back to this guy, and then back to this guy. Okay, so we got to make sure that we're clearing out everything with a 1. Now, how does that help us? Well, here you go. If I have this, let's put this again, and if I have this again, right? So if I cleared out everything that had, if I count every time I start a clear operation, right? Let's say I'm iterating uh, serially. I, let's say I hit, I start here, and then I'm like, oh, okay, let's start a clear operation. And let's not move again until we finish that cleared operation. So we cleared everything right that clear operation cleared everything so I'm moving along 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 and here again I hit this and I do another clear operation so that's two clear operations 
and the number of clear operations you start of clear operations equals the number of islands. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, we can even extend this example a bit, but I think you get the idea. Essentially, if I go back here, I, how many clear operations do I have here? I start at the top of the grid. I have one clear operation that takes care of zero, 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 zero. And so this is all zero. Uh, no clears, 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 no clears. One starting to clear. So clear that. That's two clear operations, zero, 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 zero. And here I start another clear operation. And I don't, f uh, and I remember I check everything next to it, and then I clear these two out, and that's a third clear operation. So that's the number of islands. Okay, let's see if this makes sense. So, and we're gonna start with uh, total number of islands, and return islands. Okay, so. What we're going to do, we're going to iterate, what did we say? We're going to iterate through the grid, okay? So, okay. We're iterating through the grid. Now, we're going to visit every cell. And if, uh, remember, we're going to start a clear operation if the grid value is equal to 1. And what did we say? Whenever we start a clear operation, we increment the number of islands. And we'll call this clear operation DFS. You can call it clear. You can call it island counted. Uh, for interviews and stuff like that, it's probably better to name them more appropriately. But for learning here, well, I'm just going to call it uh, DFS because that's what we're doing. We're uh, traversing the depth of this um, uh, matrix here and with a graph by extension. So here's going to be my. So this is going to be the the signature of my DFS method here. I'm going to pass my grid, and I'm going to pass the cell that I started at. Now, important, very important part of this, we got to make sure we check our boundary conditions, right? Because we don't want to run into some kind of exception by going outside the boundary of the world that we have here, or this grid, right? So you can see we have uh, uh, four boundaries, right? Um, the top left, the bottom left, the top right, the bottom right, and then, um, or the top bottom and left and right, sorry. And those are my four boundary conditions. Now, there is a fifth boundary here, right? And that fifth boundary condition, and we're doing this or, right? Because what we're doing is we're checking if we're at, if we're at, uh, past the left side of the graph, if you're here, if we're past here, the top, past the right, or past the bottom, then we're um, going to return. We're not going to continue this. That's what we want to do. But let's also add this other boundary condition, grid of ij equals 0. Then we also return. Because remember, we said we don't want to double count uh, 0. We don't want to visit somewhere we've already visited. And so this here is a way of this graph is nicely designed because this matrix is nicely designed because you can uh, essentially count for visited operations or visited uh, statuses by just setting that in the grid itself. In many graph problems you'll need a separate uh, visited matrix or visited array or something like that. In this case this, this problem is nice because you don't. But let's say now all our boundary conditions check out and we're actually in the algorithm. What do we do? All we do is set that uh, element to zero because we're clearing each element cell by cell. Okay? And what's the next thing we do? So, this is the fun part. We have to go in each direction we have to do the same thing, right? DFS grid grid i j plus one. And remember, there's how many of these do we need? we need four because we're going in four directions right 
and I can do boundary condition checking here I could have done it in the beginning I like doing that kind of stuff in the beginning uh, if I can in some cases you can but in this case you can because I want to make sure that I don't do anything if I don't have to so I'm going in each direction like here. if I start here bang 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 okay four directions okay now let's see if this runs okay and there you go all right so I wouldn't trust lead codes um, time running look at this see it's super fast now compared to before so uh, this um, time is not accurate right um, so what's the runtime of this this is going to be an oven operation because the nice thing is it may seem like you're doing a depth research and you're going in many directions and you're adding more recursion steps but remember you're clearing the grid every time you do a recursion and you're only recursing into the grid cells that are not zero right because this stops you right if you've got a zero or any of these boundaries that you've superseded then you don't recurse all right so that's it that's the solution um thanks for watching if you like the video like subscribe and comment and let me know how i'm doing as i mentioned before and happy coding i will see you next time